Hello, geeks. <laughs> I'm going to address you today not as geeks, but as citizens. I'm uh, intellectually speaking not a scientist, not a Marxist, not a behaviorist, but a pragmatist. And pragmatists believe that our knowledge advances not when we have the best theory or the best data or when we've read the most books, but when we have really good problems. And fixing election coverage is, to me, a really good problem. That's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So let's start with what's wrong with campaign coverage as usual. The first problem is reporters tend to look at the campaign as a horse race, meaning the question they ask is, who's ahead? And who has the best chance of winning? And what is their strategy? And what are the obstacles for them to win? Here's an actual headline from foxnews.com. Here comes Iowa. Who will win place and show in the 2012 caucuses? A second problem with campaign coverage, as usual, is that it's focused on strategy, meaning it tries to get inside the heads of the operatives and managers to figure out what's their thinking. So here's an actual headline from the Washington Post. Iowa beckons and Mitt Romney is responding, meaning should Mitt Romney compete in Iowa and try to win two in a row with New Hampshire, or should he skip Iowa and actually start his campaign with New Hampshire? And that kind of question is really important to the managers of Mitt Romney's campaign, but it's actually not that important to us as citizens. A third problem with campaign coverage is that it's really focused on image how the candidates are trying to present themselves to us. This is an actual headline from the New York Times front page last week. Image expert shapes Romney, his hair anyway, and it's an article about Romney's barber. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. It's about the guy who cuts Mitt Romney's hair. Third pro a fourth problem with campaign coverage as it exists is the routine of focusing on the controversy of the day, which is some small thing that created a lot of heat and, uh, and, and led one side to complain about the other. In this case, for example, on CNN, um, we had this headline, NBC apologizes to Bachman over a song. So this was a kind of a racy song that was played when Michelle Bachman came out and um, and spoke to Jimmy Fallon on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. And it lasts about a day or two, and then it's over, sort of like um, a snack. You know, it doesn't provide much nourishment. Now, why is it like this? Well, the main reason, I think, is the professional culture of the press, which is the set of beliefs that hold journalists together and instruct them in what is the journalistic thing to do. So some of the outstanding characteristics of this culture are its focus on inside baseball, which is trying to look at the campaign the way the insiders and managers and operatives do. There's also the cult of savviness, which means journalists admire and they tend to focus on a, a savvy outlook on politics. Not what's true, what's just, what's accurate, what's fair, what's right, but instead what's savvy, what's effective, what's strategic, what's smart tactically. This is the kind of outlook and sensibility that they admire. Journalists who cover the campaign are also fun focused on the production of their own innocence, meaning they need to advertise to us and continuously show us 
that they're not a part of this side or that side, that they aren't on this candidate's team or on that candidate's team, that they don't have a view, they don't have a philosophy, they don't have a party, they're just telling you the way it is. And a lot of problems in campaign coverage come about because of the need to continuously advertise their own innocence. And the strategy uh, narrative, the focus on the horse race helps them do that. This is a phrase that political scientists use. Uh, you'll find campaign managers using it, sometimes journalists use it. Low information voters. What it means is lots of voters out there don't actually know a hell of a lot. They aren't paying attention to the campaign. They are low information voters and therefore they are easy to manipulate. So low information voters are become sort of objects in the campaign just like the South Carolina primary is important to win and uh, campaign advertising is important to do well. Low information voters are important to manipulate because they're just sort of part of the landscape and part of the atmosphere. We might hope that journalists would try to convert low information voters into informed citizens, but the cult of savviness and the emphasis on strategy and the inside game and the horse race tends to cause our journalists to look at low information voters as just another condition of the campaign, another factor to um, figure into the outcome. So, how do we fix this? Well, we have to change the master narrative of campaign coverage. What I mean by the master narrative is the story that produces all the other stories. My fix is that we need a citizen's agenda in election coverage, and I'll explain to you what I mean by that. We need to shift the master narrative, that's the story that produces all the other stories, from who's going to win, which is an impoverished question, to What do you want the candidates to be discussing as they compete for votes? So here's how this would work. Instead of starting campaign coverage with who's going to win, who's ahead, what's their strategy, and how are they trying to manipulate us, journalists should go out and ask the community, ask the electorate, what do you want the candidates to be discussing as they compete for votes in 2012? And this would be starting where the users of campaign news start. Then, once we have an answer to that, and of course, we can ask this question in dozens of different ways, from survey research to fill out this web form, to social media, to call us, write us, fax us, Twitter, Facebook, every device that we have now with the media as it is allows us to ask people, what do you want the candidates to be discussing as they compete for votes in 2012? And if we can put all of those answers together we'd be able to actually fashion a priority list or agenda of issues from, let's say, 1 to 10 that journalists could then use to interrogate the candidates, structure and shape their own coverage, and make the kind of news they're giving us much more useful and connected to our own concerns. So, the citizen's agenda approach means rather than Chuck Todd, how is this going to play with the voters? You know, every time I hear somebody on television ask that kind of question, how is this going to play with the voters? I feel like saying to them, hey, buddy, I'm a voter. 
why are you talking about me as if I'm not even in the room? Right? How will this play with the voters actually takes the audience and distances them so that they're like an object of technique? So rather than how will this play with the voters, which is a savvy insiders, inside baseball question, better to ask, what did we learn today that will help voters make a smartest choice? Dumb question, who's going to win? After all, if journalists never asked who's going to win, would we find out who won? We would. Right? So who's going to win is actually preempting the work of the voters. We don't need our professional reporters to ask us who's going to win. We'll find out soon enough. Dumb question, who's going to win? Smarter question, what do the users of campaign news actually want this campaign to be about. Dan Gilmore, a friend of mine, was um, a reporter on Silicon Valley for the San Jose Mercury News in 1999. He was the first newspaper journalist to have a blog. And in covering Silicon Valley with a blog, he discovered something really important. His beat was, what are the new technologies? What's happening with venture capital? What are the hot new companies? Who's moving where? What's coming? What's next? And he realized by doing his blog about Silicon Valley, my readers know more than I do. Now, this was true in the 1950s. This was true in the 1960s. But the reason that it struck Dan Gilmore as so profound is that his readers could now, because we have the tools, reach him. In other words, he was stumbling upon a fact of life for journalists post-web, which is that the news channels are now two-way. And the readers who know more than any individual journalist could in the aggregate can now reach the newsroom. And so the challenge becomes, how do we get a flow of intelligence and knowledge from the users coming in so that we can make high quality editorial goods from it? My readers know more than I do. And that's what the question what do you want this campaign to be about, is focused on. To me, entrepreneurship means starting things simply because they need to exist. Doing what needs to be done right away without waiting for somebody to authorize you to do it. I'm sure you've heard this before, but it bears repeating. Better to beg for forgiveness than to wait for permission. That's entrepreneurship. So I'm almost completed in arranging for a citizen's agenda approach to election coverage to be actually tried in 2012 with a major media company that has a fantastic reputation online. It'll probably be announced within a week or so. And if you follow me on Twitter at that address, you'll know before anyone else does. Thank you very much.